Welcome back. Our weekly triple play of top MPs, one from each of the three major parties, have reunited before their Easter break. MP Roger Kuzner will be in his usual liberal corner. Deputy Leader Megan Leslie will be doing the orange wave for the NDP. And Conservative Finance Chair James Rajat will be explaining all the hard parts of today's topics to us all. All right. Welcome to you all. Are you going to explain the hard parts to us? Well, I want you to. You're, you're a deep thinker. You're the finance oh, committee deep... chair. Um, <laughs> The economy, like yeah. we're hearing some pretty gloomy stuff, yet everyone's sitting in the house saying, oh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, provinces that are really hard hit are rolling out budgets. Why don't we just get a budget out there? What's the holdup? Well, the budget's coming, I, you know, I think very soon. Date. What's the it's date? It's coming very soon. Yeah, I don't want to tell you a date, but I haven't finished writing it yet, Don. So, um, <laughs> I always yeah. knew you were the finance minister <laughs> no, behind no, the finance kidding, minister. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's obviously, I mean, it'll, it'll be here soon. Um, in terms of the numbers, when you talk about the GDP numbers, they were not as, as bad as expected, in fact. Um, you know, with the, the drop in global oil prices, it is having a net negative effect overall on the Canadian economy. There are some positive aspects to it, like consumers obviously are paying less at the pumps, but it is having a net ne negative overall effect. And so you're seeing that. You're seeing provinces like Alberta, their growth targets have, have uh, sharply contracted with respect to last year. Alberta, Saskatchewan have been leading the country in terms of growth. Now mm -hmm. you're seeing other provinces leading the country in terms of economic growth. So that's why we, th we think we still stay on our plan in terms of lowering taxes, moving towards a balanced budget. Uh, continuing to focus on creating jobs by lowering taxes on job creators. So that's sort of the plan we have going forward, and we're going to stick with it in the budget, I expect. And what's wrong with that, Megan? It makes perfect sense, doesn't <laughs> it? Hmm? Well, I, actually, everything I was going to say, you asked of James. I mean, where is the budget? Sorry. I mean, no, that's okay. <laughs> and you're right. I mean, uh, Alberta's, the oil revenue issue hits Alberta much harder than it hits all of all of us sort of nationally. And, and they managed to put out a budget. Um, you know, Bank of Canada Governor Steve Palaz has said we need some action to create jobs, and yet we're still left with no budget. So I don't know what in the world Joe Oliver is doing or where he's doing it. Well, for he's that giving moment. a nice speech in Toronto next oh, week. Oh, is that why yeah. he can never be in the house to answer questions <laughs> yeah. about the budget? He's he got more our, press he was yesterday. He was. He was. Yeah, that yes. was the fifth time that he, he has shown up this session. Okay, really, do we need a budget? Or I mean, the fiscal he's year like ends a, today, right? Yeah, so it's yeah. unusual to have a, a government go past the fiscal year end and not have a budget in place. But is it going to be the end of the world fiscally? I, I would think that there are a number of Canadians that are starting to get a little bit concerned when you see the shrinkage in the GDP and that was uh, the, the, that was the focus today in, uh, in, in the lead-off questions. If the GDP shrinks anymore it'll be harder to find than Joe Oliver. <laughs> So, <laughs> but, uh, but it's the joke and it's the, it's the truth. When I saw the prime minister stand today, and, and I, I don't know how he, he's got, this guy's got guts to stand up and say what he said today, you know, in response to uh, Justin's question, uh, you know, about the, the economy. And he comes back with the, the, the liberals are wed to deficits. You know, the, the liberals that delivered ten consecu nine consecutive surplus budgets, okay, and, and the guy that's answering the question, seven consecutive deficit budgets, $160 billion added to the national debt, and he says liberals are married to deficits. He's divorced from reality. Oh, you've been just, working uh, on that. Conservatives, <laughs> I, I'm sure conservatives across this country are saying, is, you know, just present a budget, Prime Minister, present a budget. They did it in Alberta at the epicenter of the oil turndown. Well, hey, you know, I, well, you just point out a couple of facts is uh, we course. actually paid down about $37 billion in our first couple of years. But we had a thing, Roger, I don't know if you missed, it was a global recession. It was a massive uh, financial crisis. That. That we were heading to a deficit you know, before we, that. After the decade of you, you, you've hit, you've sort of hit behind that. And, you know, in the 95 budget, you guys cut, what, $25 billion out of transfers to the provinces, something we have not done. We've actually increased uh, transfers to the provinces at 6% year over year. We've increased transfers to the provinces to after health care. So but you've added you also had a massively growing You've U.S. Added economy. Thank you to the for debt. the and history because of lesson. the free trade put in place by a conservative government, Canada benefited from that enormously. Okay. So, now that we've gone back in time to before you were even MP, we were like the 1995. Panel. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. Parliamentary yeah. budget officer, I thought you'd probably be doing a happy dance in the green room while you're listening to this because <laughs> the NDP plan is 15 buck an hour or 15 buck a day mm -hmm. daycare, and I guess that means childcare benefits go to people that have childcare expenses. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the PBO report is interesting because the, the analysis, I mean, he was the assistant PBO uh, was here, so I won't go over it. But basically what the child care benefit amounts to right now is it's more of a parental benefit. And, and that's fine, but call it what it is. It goes to all parents. It goes to parents of 16-year-old children, uh, you know, not necessarily needing child care. So if it's a parental benefit, that's what it is. But, you know, Stephen Harper, the prime minister, keeps saying this is our child care benefit. He, he said they would create 125,000 child care spaces, which they have actually created zero. What we need is child care. People are paying more for child care than they are paying for mortgages. Mm -hmm. It's it's impossible to make ends meet if you have Where are you guys going to be on this well, so child I, I, care I'm pleased with the, with the study. When, when the PBO comes out with a study, it actually brings some truth to the discussion and bring, you know, so you can have an actual conversation around the discussion. So that's what has been absent. So I think that, that, you know, with what he's come out with, I think the facts are there. And uh, so, you know, we should we should go forward. But uh, it, 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 it has been political. If you think it was anything other than that, uh, you know, the whole thing, writing checks to to, to uh, the, the, the parents, as uh, Megan had said, it's more of a, a parent benefit. But let's have a look at it now that the real I, numbers are out there. I know what you're going to say, but I what guess am I, I going to say? You are going to say that the government of Canada, the current government, has raised the amount of money put into child care from, I guess it's going almost to seven, eight billion dollars. Yeah, almost eight billion dollars. Which is dollars, more than yeah. double what it was that's right. yesterday, that's right. last year. Yeah. That's said very well, Don. Okay. We should switch seats. But, <laughs> but, but in addition, I, I think you should also say, Don, that uh, <laughs> this shows a fundamental philosophical difference, right? Which is you have two parties who are saying we want to have the federal government establish child care spaces. We want to, you know, subsidize direct spaces. Our view is different. Our view is you actually pro provide the money directly to parents people who work shift work and others, so that they can best decide how to care for their children. Allow parents the, the increased resources and allow them the decision to do that. That's our view, and then the Liberals and NDP have a very different view, so it'll be a very interesting discussion during the election. I guess I want to quickly get your thoughts on C-51, the anti-terrorism bill that's uh, getting ready to move out of committee. Uh, the witness list has more or less been done with, but I was struck by Michael Geist, who, who did sort of a, a numbers play on the witnesses, and one stuck stuck out to me. Uh, the number of privacy commissioners who publicly criticized C-51 is 12. The number of appearances by federal or provincial privacy commissioners, zero. The number of U.S. groups with no Canadian connections to appear to witnesses, three. So was this whole thing a sham, like Megan? Was it mm -hmm. a sham? Yeah, I'm actually pulling up a quote from Geist where he says, few legislative issues are as important as the security and privacy of Canadians, but the entire hearings were structured to avoid hearing from ex experts asking relevant questions, etc. Uh, I sat in on uh, meetings, especially when the environment folks were there and implications on environment groups, and it was laughable. I mean, the Conservative MPs on committee talked out the clock. They talked out the clock. Uh, one of them, I remember, asked Greenpeace, are you a threat to national security? And then kept talking. Didn't mm. even let them answer. I mean, if, if we're dealing with security and privacy of Canadians, doesn't it warrant an actual hearing hmm. at committee and this was not a hearing Roger it, you know and speaking with I think Wayne Easter's done a great job on this for us as well and uh, you know he, he said the way that the conservative members really abused the witnesses it, it was it was it, it bordered on abuse mm -hmm. and uh, so you know some experts are going to be saying what in the name of jumpins am I going to go back to committee for if I, that's the way I'm going to be treated by parliamentarian yeah. but James runs such a great committee he as does. finance there's none of this nonsense there but James you must be a little cringing at this uh, situation on this particular case. well but if you my understanding is um, I mean I'm, we're fine actually at finance we're studying terrorist finance and we had a very good panel this morning and different views and and all political parties suggest witnesses for the committee. That's my understanding of what happened here is that they had 10 full meetings. They had witnesses with very different perspectives on the bill or legislation, made a number of different suggestions. The government came forward with amendments to clarify certain aspects, to clarify that CSIS, in fact, does not have certain powers within the country, to clarify and say that, in fact, it, it is, you can law protest in this country. That is not, in fact, what this bill is going after. So I think the amendments hopefully will address some of the concerns that have been raised during the hearings. And hopefully people will see this as a piece of legislation that is designed to empower our intelligence agencies and the RCMP and others 
in fact, to deal with the terrorist threat. And, and that is what Canadians want us to do. The first responsibility of government is to ensure the safety of its citizens. That's but, what we are endeavoring to do. But not compromising the, the, their own security. Like, like their own privacy. Their own, their own, they, their they, own they privacy. They go hand in they, hand. They, That's exactly what they, we they, they want. They want the oversight and, uh, and, and the sunset aspect of it is important to Canadians, too, and that hasn't come out in the hearings. Good discussion, as always. Thank you, guys. Have a good Easter Thanks break. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Happy like Easter. Three weeks, eh? Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Okay, coming up.